an archive of correspondence, including several letters from C.S. Lewis relating to his editorship of the Nelson's Medieval Literature Library. That's wrong. Um, sorry, do it again. Uh, an, <laughs> an archive of original material, including autograph letters signed by C.S. Lewis relating to his editorship of Nelson's Medieval and Renaissance Library. I'm Adam Douglas, Senior Specialist in Rare Books at Peter Harrington, and I'd like to show you a little of this extensive archive. The archive was gathered together and uh, retained by Geoffrey Shepherd. Geoffrey Shepherd was one of three scholars. He was an English professor at the University of Birmingham. And you can see that this is the uh, project that they were involved in, Nelson's Medieval and Renaissance Library. Geoffrey Shepherd was the leading uh, young scholar of these three uh, scholars, now, now famous, uh, of course, in uh, English literature studies, Derek Brewer and Eric Stanley. And Geoffrey Shepherd and uh, his colleagues had come up with the idea of getting some new editions printed of various Middle English texts because they weren't good enough. So they were cyclist styling uh, texts for their students and they, they felt they'd rather have proper printed ones. So Thomas Nelson agreed to publish the series, but because they were young uh, editors, they, they needed a general editor. And C.S. Lewis, of course, was uh, very well known by this uh, stage. He uh, was uh, already been very well known to the general public during the war with his lectures on the radio. And uh, by now he'd started uh, publishing his Narnia, Chronicles of Narnia. So he was very well known. But of course, his uh, professional career was as a professor of medieval and Renaissance English at Cambridge. And Lewis agreed to, um, to be the general editor. Funnily enough, Thomas Nelson, as, as the archive shows, this is a particular letter, weren't immediately very keen, which is uh, odd. Uh, you'll see him, dear Mr. Shepherd, explaining about who the editors, uh, who the people in the publishing house are going to be. But then it says, the hitch is the business of C.S. Lewis. Um, and uh, a suggestion that uh, Professor F.P. Wilson do the job instead. But um, I think they saw sense in the end and they decided to get C.S. Lewis on board. And Shepherd didn't know C.S. Lewis personally at this stage. So the letters are rather interesting from Lewis. Uh, at first, there's just a little little note, dear Shepherd, you know. Um, oh, I didn't realize, you know, of course I'll read them, I did, uh, but I just wondered whether I had to read every single word, uh, yours, C.S. Lewis. Um, but as the relationship progresses, um, there's still dear Shepherd here, um, but this is written from his home in uh, Oxford. He um, was professor in Cambridge, but lived in Oxford. <laughs> rather confusingly, but um, he's now getting into the technical details of uh, the uh, editorship needed. Um, Shepard, of course, was doing most of the work. Shepard Brewer and Stanley were doing most of the editing work, but Lewis was overseeing it. And uh, it's interesting to read the letters in detail because they do show that as a professional writer, he had a particular interest in uh, Shepherd and his uh, fellow scholars really being as concise and clear as possible so that the common reader would really understand what they were saying. So uh, there are in total, um, these are fully written in, um, in Lewis's hand, uh, there are 12 letters from Lewis to Shepherd. Um, some of them short, like this, which is just arranging a date, you know, um, you know, I'll, I'll take that as, the, as an agreed unless I hear to the contrary, that kind of a letter, or this kind of letter, which is, is much more Lewis having studied, um, this is an introduction that Shepherd had sent him, and so Lewis has really gone to town, um, writing on both sides of the paper, um, about how he sees it set out. Lewis was famous for being able to organize material very well, lecture material, and he gives detailed notes here. Um, so Shepard must have found these very useful. Um, um, there's a lot of material, um, some of them just fairly scrappy notes and some of them detailed. It goes through, uh, their relationship carries on until I think the latest letter is dated 12th of June, 1962. So um, 
that's a, a fair few years from uh, 1954 to 62 of their relationship. And Shepard has kept all the other material, uh, so he's kept all the archive, all the letters that he had with, mainly with the publisher, Thomas Nelson. Um, there are 114 items here. Um, we've kept them in this file just for ease of reference, but they're back and forth between the publisher um, describing all the details of this. Uh, the only other thing that relates to Lewis is that um, one American uh, scholar, perhaps slightly cheekily, wrote directly to C.S. Lewis asking if he could contribute an edition of Spencer's Mutability Cantos to uh, the series. And C.S. Lewis has noted here that he doesn't think that it really would fit into the series. And he's also sent a copy of the letter that he sent to the American scholar explaining that he didn't really think it was uh, hardly the sort of thing the series was devised for. And there's his signature again, which is uh, just on the, on the draft. So together, that is a substantial archive. Uh, very unusual to get this kind of thing outside an institution where the whole papers relating to uh, one single project involving C.S. Lewis um, uh, yeah, are covered by um, this extensive archive. For details of this, full details, a full description of the collection and other items related to C.S. Lewis and indeed to medieval literature and literature in general, please see our website.